Welcome back in today's community conversation. We have Katie Ayala from the prosecution team with the county attorney's office. And she's joining us here in the studio to talk about juvenile crime. Yes, thank you so much for being here with us today, Jessica. I'm gonna let you take the first question. So we've done several stories on the increase of juvenile crimes in the last few years. So what has this meant uh, for how busy in terms of cases you are and is there a backlog? We are very busy. Um, the county attorney's office juvenile unit is very busy. However, we understand the importance of juvenile cases being presented and filed with the courts as soon as possible. So we don't have a backlog. We work diligently just so we ensure that the juveniles being presented to our office receive services as fast as possible. And is there a trend in juvenile crime that we're seeing or are the crimes being committed by juveniles? Is it a wide range of them? There's definitely a wide range of offenses happening in our community. However, I would say the main cases that we're seeing are going to be the THC vape pens, assaults, that's gonna be a common one, lots of school fights, assault family violence um, going on, and also burglary of vehicles. I'm sure in the news, you know, you guys have reported and the community seen, there are a lot of burglary of vehicles and even thefts of vehicles going on. That's not taking into account all of the increase of the violent crimes happening. However, those aren't as common, but the nature of the offenses have become more violent over the past two years. And talk to us a little bit more about those vaping cases. I know we've done some stories here. Uh, where does the department currently stand with those? What programs are being set in place now um, to curb that? Because again, it is, it is a huge issue, right? So our office takes these cases very seriously. Uh, we are the prosecuting agency for juveniles which is going to be individuals from the age of 10 to 16 years of age um, so we take them very seriously it is a felony offense no matter how many vape pens you have it is a felony um, so we screen each case individually look at the case and if we're able to file it or at least get this juvenile some services through the juvenile probation department we are going to do that and is there any other programs that you guys have in place to kind of help curb juvenile crime other than, you know, the stuff that you guys are doing to help with the vaping? Because that is a large issue. I guess just how busy are you guys? So our office is the prosecuting agency, so our office doesn't provide the programs, we don't implement the programs, but we work very close with the juvenile probation department and other organizations to assist. Our office is always willing to um, collaborate and to support their programs. Um, but we'll, you know, even working with schools, just trying to get out there, trying to get parents to educate themselves and learn the importance of these cases and not only the dangers to the juvenile's health, but also the consequences that they're facing with a felony offense. Right, um, something else that we wanted to talk about is we did speak to the FBI um, about gang activity and juvenile involvement and they did mention that they feel that there's a lack of a robust system at the federal level to deal with juvenile crime and that the state is being too lenient because you know there's more of an effort to kind of help these juveniles and then potentially put them back on the streets to commit the crimes. What, what, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's really important for us to realize and to understand that the juvenile system is completely different than the adult criminal system. The juvenile system is focused on the rehabilitation of the juvenile, where when you're looking at adult cases, you're looking at punitive punishment. And so when you're looking at the juvenile system, the focus is to re rehabilitate a juvenile, and that's going to be by providing services to that juvenile and the family. When one, kid, one juvenile is on probation, it's the whole family on probation to make sure that we can deter any, any offenses. Um, and then also you have to look at the other principles when handling juvenile cases. Are we holding the juvenile accountable and are we also protecting the community? So we have to weigh those principles, but we always have to focus on rehabilitation as well. And I know that every case is different, but could you talk a little bit about some of the ways that you guys do um, provide rehabilitation services to not only the juvenile, but the family, and I guess some of the services that are offered, because it is a lot different, like you're saying, than maybe an adult being charged with something. So our office doesn't do the you know rehabilitation itself. We work closely, though, with the juvenile probation department, but they do have different levels of probation, different services, whether a juvenile is in need of mental health treatment, substance abuse, 
abuse treatment, um, and they are the ones that evaluate the case, evaluate the family and the juvenile, and then recommend the where this juvenile should be placed. But ultimately, it is the court's decision, but they assist in that evaluation. All right, Kenny, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. If you just tuned into this community conversation, we'll have a full replay of it on our, K on our website, kfoxtv.com, as well as some past community conversations. Yes, Katie, thank you so much. Very informative. I know I learned a lot today, and I'm sure the viewers at home did too. You're going to want to keep it here. We'll be right back after this short break.